How are you doing? Welcome to uh, live stream number 165. I just lost my clock here. All right, today uh, we're gonna talk everything you need to know about importing files, uh, STL files into Fusion. I'm a little bit early. If you're watching this recording, I don't blame you. Just fast forward. We have like three minutes left. Just look at the clock up there. And in about three minutes, we will hit it hard and talk about everything you need to know about importing STL files into Fusion 360. But I'm a little bit early sitting here. Thought I might as well just uh, check in and see uh, if there's anybody who want to join us today. And I can see we already have people in here. We had Isaac in here. Robert is here, David, really appreciate it. Fun King 3D is here, that's awesome. Matthew, Jan, all you guys. I hope, um, I hope that you guys had a, uh, we can see we got Germany here, show that one. I hope you guys had a, uh, an awesome weekend. We had a long weekend here in, uh, in, in the US. It was a wonderful, wonderful, um, wonderful time. Enjoyed it with some family. It was just good to, uh, to kind of relax a little bit. Uh, so that was absolutely awesome. Yeah, so just uh, winding down here have about uh, two minutes uh, Till we are we're gonna talk about uh, today's what is all about um, Talk about STL files question here about when we're gonna do some uh, some T splines or how it's coming on Should do some more videos on T splines. I'm trying to flex it a little bit between you know some models some different stuff I'm trying to be somewhat uh, a little bit random with these live streams uh, we got Denmark here, uh, Arno, we got Germany, guten tag. Um, really pre I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to join these uh, live streams. It's absolutely, absolutely awesome. Um, so uh, yes, today's topic, everything you need to know about importing um, STL files. This is actually two live streams kind of like packed into a quick uh, one. Uh, got, keep on getting questions about these STL files. Uh, and I thought I just want to make a, a quick video showing uh, how to kind of like handle STL files. One video, so when people are emailing me with questions, I can just file them up like that. Um, yeah, Royal with cheese. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna try to do these uh, pre live streams just to, just to have an opportunity just to say a thank you to to all of you. Um, you know, again, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these especially uh, as they are, as random as they are. Um, question from Robert, how do you scale the STL file? Ooh, that's a good question. I hadn't, um, I hadn't planned on showing that, but you know what, Robert? I will show you that in uh, eh, about a minute or so. Um, really cool. All right, guys. Hey, I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time, trying this new concept with, um, with some, uh, some pre-live stream hellos. So thank you so much. I can see the time is up. So uh, let's jump in and uh, and let's get this uh, get this started. All right. So I'm just gonna clear the timer here. And three. Should I count down? Three, two, one. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today's live stream. It is number one hundred and sixty-five, uh, and today is May 29th, twenty ninth, twenty eighteen. It's almost June, folks. My name is Lars Christensen, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to watch these videos. Today's topic, everything you need to know about importing STL files into Fusion 360. This is uh, kind of uh, two old live streams that I'm just kind of like going to combine into one. So um, if you're looking for this topic, uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's get into it and let's talk about, um, about these, these import, these STL files. So a couple of things I want to show you, um, and I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly, not getting too much into details, because uh, again, I know that a lot of you guys uh, just want to get, get the solution. I talk too much. STL files. So you're normally used to over in your data panel over here to, um, to kind of import them, import them in. Uh, but when it comes to STL files, I actually would recommend you go to the insert drop down and right here there is an insert mess because that is what an STL file is, right? It is a mesh file. Uh, click on that. We're gonna open up two different uh, STL files today and it's important that you stay patient and watch both of them. Um, the first one here, let's double click on this one and um, 
I'm just gonna hide the data panel up here. Uh, we don't need that right now. And here is this mod. We have used this one in a prior live stream, so you can definitely, where we went into more depth. Um, but a couple of things that is important. Um, you, uh, you can choose some unit types over here. Uh, these different um, things you can set in. You also get this free move uh, that can be rather nice. Uh, so a free move, if you're brand new to Fusion, that means that it will not be recorded down in the timeline. I'm just gonna rotate it. So our top here kind of assembles with the top of this, I think it's a table, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, hit okay to that. And uh, what we now have is what we will call an STL mesh file. And you will see down here in the bottom, we have a little uh, mesh icon. If we go over and click on the bodies folder, you will also see that it says here, it is a mesh body. So let me just talk quickly about STL files. And I've gotten some heat in the past, and that's probably justified uh, in regards to STL files. I do not hate STL files. I do not. But STL files is just triangular, flat triangular shapes. Um, and many times when you get an STL file, you have not have con had control about how this tight, this triangular mess was created. What means that if we look at this file here, and if we go to look at the left side, and we zoom in, if we zoom in really, really close, you will notice that this hole is not round. It is linear, 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 linear. That is because it is a, a STL file. It is just a bunch of different triangles uh, that is added up. And the reason that I'm just not the biggest fan of them is uh, because of the accuracy. Now, SEL files are mostly used because of 3D printing. That's kind of like where they got their, they were not, they didn't invent them, but that's where they got kind of like their second life was when 3D printing came up. And I understand why the 3D printing companies picked STL files because in the beginning as uh, 3D printing was not accurate at all and they just needed a very light format and that's what STL files is. What we like to do inside of Fusion normally, the end goal is to turn it into a solid uh, because most 3D printers will accept um, an STL file directly. So you don't even have to go through a CAD CAM software. If you download it from a cool website like Thingiverse, uh, then you can just stuff it right into to your printer. But inside of Fusion, we most of the times want this thing to turn into a solid, which means it is a watertight uh, model where we have mass. So meaning that if we, if we cut this one in half right now, there's nothing inside of this. It is just triangular, uh, non-thick shell. Uh, but we normally wanna make it a solid. Here comes the trick to turn this file into a solid. First thing first, you need to get rid of this timeline. Well, wait a minute. Why do I have this timeline in the first place? Remember that normally when we're modeling from scratch inside of Fusion, we want this timeline that kind of records everything down here in the bottom. When we gotta convert an STL file into a solid, we do not want this timeline. We need to get into direct edit mode. We do that by right clicking up here on the top uh, component. How would you ever know that? And turn on, do not capture design history. When I click on that, you're gonna get a warning. It's not, it's not a, a bad thing, nothing's gonna blow up, um, but you need to know that we are removing everything that was recorded on this timeline. I'm just gonna click continue, and nothing really changed on your model other than the timeline disappeared. Now, you right click on the model, right click with your mouse, and you go in and say mesh to B rep. Mesh to B rep, you click on that. It's gonna come up here and ask you, it already selected our mesh body, uh, and now we can turn it into a, a new body. So we just click okay to that, and three, two, one, and it turns gray, and it is now a solid. Now, if we click on the easiest way to, to notice this, is by clicking on this little arrow here, and uh, you will see that we have actually still both files. We now have a body file, that's a solid, and we have a, uh, a mess file, depending on which light bulb uh, we click on. Now, um, if you watch the original live stream I did with this model, you will see that I started converting a lot of, like that hole, 
I showed how to turn it into a full circular hole if you need that. Many times you don't. If you're just 3D printing, maybe you just gotta make a couple changes to this model and, and, and you're all good with that. Another thing I wanna show on this model is that you can clean it up. So if you're looking at these, um, this face is flat uh, that I'm hovering over right now. Um, but you can see that it's still all those different triangles. You can actually, if the model is simple enough, if I select this face and click delete on my keyboard, you will actually see that, that fusion kind of heals the face. It doesn't make anything necessarily better per se, but it just looks at that face. And when you hit delete on your keyboard, do that again, it just kind of cleans it up. It sees where I can heal that face. So for this model here, you could actually go around and clean up uh, a lot of, uh, of these faces and maybe make the model, if they are flat faces, and actually make the model a little bit more, um, you know, flat and, and, and better to look at. Robert just asked a brilliant question inside of, um, in, of uh, in, the, in the chat. Um, how do you scale it? Well, I would normally turn my, my STL file into a solid and then I would literally just go down and use uh, the scale uh, menu under modify, select the body, and uh, you can now make it twice as big if you want to, um, and it will be, be scaled up um, twice as big. So that was, a good, that was a good question. So that was the first model I want to show you. Now, it, like I said, it is important uh, that, that you watch the next one because uh, let's open up, uh, I'm gonna go up here and click a new document. And uh, let's go to insert again, hit insert mesh. This time let's select the second one. And again, we get a free move. So I'm just gonna rotate this model around. On uh, Thingiverse, uh, this is Mount Rushmore with Benjamin Franklin. Well, I am maybe not American, but I know enough about my history that that is definitely not uh, Benjamin Franklin we had over on, uh, on the right here, one of my favorite should read, if you are to want to read a great book, read his autobiography. Uh, so, a couple of things I want to show you with this one. First, um, let's follow the same steps we did before. Um, repetition is key in all learning. Uh, so we have imported this mesh file with the insert mesh uh, box up here. Next thing we had to do was we had to get rid of uh, the toolbar down here. Again, we're gonna do that by right clicking up on the top component, say do not capture design history. We are going to get a warning. We're okay, we're not afraid of anything. Uh, and we are now in, um, in the same mode as before in the direct editing mode. Now, we're gonna right click and we're gonna say mess to B rep. And we're gonna say okay to convert this into a B rep and we get a warning. This mess contains a large number of facets. That means triangles. Actually, it counts 66,386 uh, facets, all triangle flat faces. Conversion has been aborted. Boohoo. That, um, that was not what we wanted. But the truth of the matter is that um, turning something from a mass, from a STL file into a solid, does take some computer power um, and it's not the easiest calculation in the world. So CAD companies normally set a, a loft of how big a mess uh, you can actually bring in before the software is gonna kinda like get uh, down on its knees. So let's just look at this model here. Now, I know that right now I cannot convert it over. There is too many of uh, these triangles. And if we zoom in a little bit, I mean, Look at the amount of details here um, on, on, on these um, models here, um, just to, to look at, at, at some of the details, right? It's, it's very fine with all these triangles. Um, one thing we could do was we could use uh, the mesh tools. Now, another thing you need to know, the mesh tools in the dropdown are only available when you have an STL file on the screen, okay? so. If you don't have an STL file on the screen, you will never see uh, this uh, mesh uh, icon. With an, a, a mesh file on the screen, you can see it. Now, if I click on it right now, I actually get another warning. Enable the mesh workspace preview in the preferences. 
And what this means is that the mesh toolbar is still in preview um, or in beta, you could say, here uh, inside of Fusion 360. And we don't want you to do anything in preview without making sure that you're fully aware of that you are in a preview tool, meaning it's kind of in a beta tool, so things might change. So you have to turn it on manually. That's okay, I'll show you, it's easy enough. So hit okay on this menu, go up and click on your name in the upper right, click on preferences, and your preferences will open up. Move down to the preview section in here. And actually, when you look in here, you will see that there's a lot of different things that Fusion has in preview right now. What personally, <laughs> I think is pretty dang cool. Um, so um, we can turn on the mess workspace. We can actually turn on uh, all the different things, but let's just turn on the mess workspace right here. Hit apply and hit okay. And now when I go back in, and click on the mess in the drop down. You will now see that I get um, a the mess tool here. Uh, a couple of things you should know about this. There is a cool function under the select tool called a mess palette. Uh, this is a neat function they put in here um, where to make it easier to select things if you're working with mess. So you will kind of see how I kind of have a brush right now for selection. You see that? So you can actually make that brush size bigger uh you know whatever whatever you kind of want if you want us to select uh things like that uh, of course you can also use window selects and freeform selects all the other tools inside uh, that you normally can do in model environment you should play around with these but this mesh palette can be nice uh, for selection i just want to make sure you saw that uh, now and a couple of things that probably should be pointed out about this model remember 66,000 some faces we have I know I will have to make it smaller. Uh, I might just choose to see if I can't eliminate <laughs> Benjamin Franklin or whoever's uh, cookie monster face that is over there. Uh, so I'm gonna go on to modify and make just look all the different tools that are in here. Uh, this is maybe for another day to, uh, to play around with. Uh, but there's one called Plane Cut. So if I go over here and I select our mesh file and I click on Flip Direction, you will actually see that I can use the arrows to kind of trim uh, this model here. Let's go into the front view and kind of go to the side here. I can even kind of like rotate a little bit if I want to get a little bit closer to um, there, right? So now it's a little bit, little bit closer. Um, and it will actually, when I spin it around here, it will actually, oh, I didn't heal it. Let me just undo that again. I should have checked heal. Plain cut. I just select the model, and then you can you can turn on here. I wanna I want it to fill uh, that face. I want to make sure that it's filled because I'm gonna try to turn it into a solid at the end. So I want to turn it into a watertight model. Get a little bit closer to my friend Lincoln here. Boom boom boom. Something like that. Maybe close enough. Hit OK, and now you will see um, that it is. Um, it's healed up here. So with this, we could say, all right, uh, so maybe we are a little bit closer now to a, a value that Fusion could turn this into a solid. And the way you would go back and check that is just literally going back into the model environment. Remember, you can jump between these different workspaces uh, without losing anything. And then we could right click on the model again and we can say mess to be wrap. You should actually click on it. Mess to be wrap and click new body, I get, I lowered it down to 56,000, but the conversion has still been aborted. So it's still not good enough. That's okay. I'm not gonna be too upset. Let's go back to the mess workspace because in the modified dropdown, there's actually a reduce option in here. So if I click on reduce, and then I'm gonna go in and select the window selection because I actually wanna reduce the entire model here. That is fine for me. Um, and normally it will show up on reduce target as a density and it gives you a value. I normally like to change that in the drop down to face count because that's what we kind of like been talking about right now, like 66 down to 56,000. Um, and I'm not sure what, the higher you make this number, you can play around with it. And it really depends on, there is not a hard, hard number. Uh, there's a couple of different, as far as I know, 
uh, things that comes into effect, but you can play around uh, with this number. Uh, let's try to make it uh, maybe 35,000 uh, facets. And if you turn on these preserved boundaries and the preview, you can actually, when you zoom in, you can actually see uh, the preview as you are playing around uh, with, if you're playing around with the slider here, we should actually see kind of like that uh, preview show up. So let's try to make this 35,000. And I do get a, we might have an issue right now. Oh, this is why I like these uh, these live streams. Turn the preview on, preserve boundaries. Uh, and let's hit OK and see what it says. Click on that. And that's probably just going to take a second to calculate. All right. I do think it did it um, when I'm looking over here. Uh, on the mouth, it looks a little tighter. Let's see if it did it. So let's go into um, the model environment. Right click, go into Master B Wrap, say OK to a new body. Oh, it didn't do it. All right. See that? It said it didn't do it. It might be because the way I cut it up here, I wonder. I'm not going to quit on this. Mesh, go in and reduce. This is why I like to do live streams. Now you can see that I sometimes struggle too. Select everything. I like to change this to a face count. And so this boundary gives me an error. I want to try to turn that off and just see here 35,000. Yeah, see it keeps on giving me there's an error here. So I don't think it's going to do it. Okay, let's try a face count of 25,000. Oh, we gotta select something. This is supposed to be a quick live stream. 25,000, hit okay. So I think it's maybe something with the way I cut the model here. Um, you know what? Let's try this instead. I'm gonna board this. Let's open a new model. Let's go insert, insert mesh. Let me just check that. Rotate that around there. Hit OK. Turn that off there. It might be better to try to see if we reduce it, if we do the reduction first and then cut this maybe afterwards. Let's try to reduce this. I'm going to do the window selection of everything. Let's try to change this to a face count. No, nope, still gives me the warning. Okay, that is very interesting, folks. Why would it do that? So let's try reduce, let's just try a density and that should be way small, but we don't want to do it at all. All right. I am going to try this instead. I am going to try to restart fusion. Now, this is me troubleshooting on my end in the best fashion I know, but might not be, uh, <laughs> it might not be the, the, uh, the official, that's probably the available right now is just shaking his head and says, you should just have, you should just have done that. Um, but let me, I want to try to see if we can't do something here. Um, insert that mesh. I still want to move it. I don't think that's going to cost it anything. Uh, change into do not capture the sign. Let's go into the mesh toolbar. Let's try to reduce it. And the other problem could be with the selection here, I guess. If it doesn't select, it may not have selected everything through. Looks like it did that there. Face count. 
35. Turn the preview on. Hit OK. Think for a second. Model environment. Right click. And then you will see that now it loaded down to, to um, 35,000. So it missed two. So, okay, so now, so it might, maybe I needed to restart it after I turned on those mesh tools. That could be it. Um, <laughs> but now it will, it will give you as a warning and say that we still have a very high count uh, here. Um, so do we want to preserve the con conversion? And now I know that if I hit okay to this now, uh, it should absolutely uh, convert it. Um, but before I do that, I do, don't want to leave uh, out what I did before with the plain cut. So I'm just going to do uh, this in, uh, in the other direction. Because then somebody's going to say to me, hey, you skipped out on the cut. I think I maybe just had to, maybe you just have to restart the mess tool after you have turned it on. That would not surprise me. So now we're back to here. Let's try this again. <sighs> Model, going <laughs> to have it in here, right click and uh, mess to B-Rep. Let's see if it does it. We're down to 31,000 now. Um, conversion and hit OK. And uh, then we should just wait a second. And uh, that should now turn into a... Uh, into a solid. That's at least uh, what I am hoping. It might just take a few minutes uh, because again, that uh, there is a lot of calculations going in the background. And it's absolutely important to know uh, that when you're working and you can see like the kind of bars working down the bottom, that when you're doing this, turning something from an STL file into a solid, that you are doing a lot of calculations in the background. So in this case here, uh, it did, turn it into a solid. We can see that again, if we hit the little drop down here, we now have a solid body. Now again, it is triangular. It means that every single triangle is kind of flat. It's a flat surface, but this is now a, um, a fully uh, solid uh, body like that. Whew, I'm glad that we got that figured out, huh? So I think that <laughs> to take away from uh, to take away from this live stream today, this Monday, on everything you need to know about importing solids, one of the important things, or importing STL files, one of the important things is you probably need to restart after you turn on the, the mesh uh, workspace to get things to, uh, to work in there. But I hope some good tips um, to bring it in through the mesh, uh, insert mesh tool instead of through your data panel, uh, turn on the history tree, right click convert um, into BREP, if the STL file is too big, and this happens a lot, I know that for a lot of you guys, uh, then go into uh, the preview, turn on the mess workspace, restart your machine, do that, and then you have a couple of options in there to work with, uh, with some of those things in there. That was what I was planning on showing today. I hope uh, that this was useful. Do me a favor, if you like this, uh, give the thumbs up. If you don't like this, uh, thumbs down, especially if you <laughs> didn't like me struggling around. Hey, just uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of live streaming. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to join these live streams. I'm gonna do what I normally do. I am going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching um, the recording, thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Um, and if you're inside of the live stream, I am gonna jump in there. Before I do that, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, I would truly appreciate if you would do that. That is kind of like how I can tell my boss that people are actually uh, watching this. So until tomorrow, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much. Take care, folks.